We had been east in Oak Ridge, Tennessee and Schenectady, New York, but we had belonged to First Press Berkeley before we um, came back. And so when we moved to Orinda, there were a lot of people in the church that had started almost a year before whom we knew from First Press Berkeley because it was congregations mainly of Berkeley and Walnut Creek Press that had begun the church. So it was like coming home and Carl Thomas, our wonderful pastor, had been our assistant pastor at First Press Berkeley. So we knew the senior pastor already. So. It was obvious we would come here. Well, we were very early on. I think the church had been established for maybe nine or 10 months or a year by the time we first went. We went to the Park Theater in Lafayette. So everybody jokes about it smelling of popcorn on Sunday mornings. It was an ordeal to get to church because the nursery was at Mrs. Bryan's house on First Street. The Sunday school was at the town hall so we went one, two, and then we came to church. Once you establish yourself at the park and everything was okay, then you listen to what the minister had to say. So it was, a, it was kind of an adventure. And then we wound up, you know, getting this campus that we're on. It's kind of interesting because all the meetings were held in the uh, living room at my parents' house to get people together to raise the funds to buy this property. My mom and dad said, well, we're gonna have several Sunday afternoons where we have meetings. We need to get money loaned to the church so that we can make a down payment on this property. After the first Sunday, they came and told my sister and I that we raised all the money in the first session and there won't be any more Sunday meetings and we're ready to go. And then we went through the process of buying the property and building this campus. In the meantime, you're, you're still meeting at the Park Theater and you say, we, we need to get this done because we need a decent place to have this church thrive and, and, and grow. So uh, it worked out just fine, worked out just fine. And then we finally uh, opened the sanctuary and, and um, it, it was great. Jean Christie, Marty Robinson and I were the first three women elders because when we first joined the church in 1955, there were no women elders. And I don't remember the exact time when it started, but in the early 60s. And let me tell you, like I was a young housewife then, and there were all these businessmen in their suits and ties who'd come from their offices in San Francisco, and it was a bit intimidating for sure. But um, we held our own. I need to, I need to be able to bring some of God's of Jesus Christ's miracles to the rest of the world. And that's when I started doing the work in Africa and education and all that, because uh, God had empowered me to bring some of these miracles that we read about in the New Testament to the rest of the world. And so I've been doing that ever since. But all that teaching and all that thought came from worship here. Mission has been my passion at this church since the very beginning, and I chaired the mission committee several different times. I was a elder four times, I think, so um, at different times. But mainly that was um, my focus and, and continues to be. This is a place to heal and get reinvigorated and to reach out and, 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 and go through the rest of your week after Sunday church and be dynamite and understand what God wants you to do and how he wants you to act and then to, you know, do his work in the world. This is a place where our family came and grew up. My three children all grew up here in the church and um, it's where we've had all the important events of our lives pretty much. The longtime association we had with Jim Little who for the ministry, you know, Jim was here for decades. And that association, and then to come back and be able to put the Dornsife and little name on the Christian Ed building and so forth, it, it meant an awful lot to us. You know, when I bring my grandchildren to church with me, I take them over and say, well, this is, this is what your grandfather left here uh, as a legacy and so forth, and it's all very meaningful. You know, I lost my son and I've lost two husbands. The caring community here and the love that is shown to people in need or 
at different times, periods of their lives when they need help in one way or another. I think it's just amazing and it means so much to me and I know to so many others that no matter what happens, the congregation is here to help and care and love. It's just a uh, tremendous outreach. It's a factor in the community. I love that we, even when budgets are tight, we, we sustain missions because I think part of our outreach to the world is through missions and, and so forth. And I just appreciate that thought process and what we're doing to make the world a better place. And, and that's central in the, in the mission of the church in addition to hearing the word of God.